$100 million. That is what the CEO of McLaren Racing, Zach Brown, is worth. Now, for anyone that watches a decent amount of Formula One, they know Zach as the bubbly and fun head of the McLaren F1 team. But behind that friendliness is a seriously smart and cunning marketing genius. He's taken McLaren from a laughing stock to a truly competitive outfit in just a few years and is looking to take not just McLaren F1, but McLaren Racing as a whole to another level. Looking into Zach's background and journey to Formula One was fascinating. Not only did he race to a decent level, but he was already a huge figure in Formula One before the McLaren job. He's an incredibly hard-working wheeler dealer with a net worth that reflects that. Just to put it in context, he's got a car collection of old race and road cars worth around $15 million. Now, this collection reflects Zach's success and achievements, but also his fun and playful personality. So for this video, I'm going to dive into Zach's life story and give an insight into how he has found himself leading one of Formula One's most iconic teams and how he has amassed his enormous net worth. So Zachary Challen Brown was born in Los Angeles, California on the 7th of November 1971, and from a very young age he was fascinated by motorsport. Zach used to attend various racing events around LA with his dad and younger brother until he went to his first F1 race at the age of 10, the 1981 US Grand Prix in Long Beach. Funnily enough, he was instantly a fan of the McLaren team and was addicted to Formula 1 ever since. However, his first introduction to racing was in 1987 when he went back to Long Beach for the IndyCar Grand Prix with his close friend Nick. Through his friend, he was able to meet racing legend Mario Andretti, and Zach asked Mario how he could become a driver himself. Well, this is where Mario introduced Zach to karting, and only a few months later, after Zach sold some watches he had won and bought his own kart, he was testing his skills on the track. He continued to take part in karting competitions over the next five years and did pretty well, winning 22 races over that period. Then he took the leap of faith every aspiring young driver must do, leave home behind and move to Europe. So he arrived in the UK at the age of 21 and understandably didn't know anyone. So he found the nearest racing school, the legendary Jim Russell Racing School, and got involved. And well, he immediately impressed by winning the internal competition at the school and got the attention of a man called Richard Dean who ran his own team at the time. Zach also worked at the school to earn some money in the meantime to support his racing career. And well, he eventually found himself driving in Class B of British Formula 3 in 1994 and finished 8th on 39 points. But 1995 was a huge year in the context of Zach's motorsport career. This was the year Zach founded his own company, Just Marketing. This came about through one of his sponsors at the time, TWA. Basically, Zach wanted to move back to the US to continue racing, but his sponsor TWA couldn't stay with him, so they asked if he could find a different team in the paddock to take their sponsorship. Well, Zach managed to transfer the sponsorship over to Nigel Mansell's F3 team, and this deal made Zach realize something. He could make quite a bit of money on the side of racing by doing similar sponsorship deals acting as a middleman between the companies and the teams. So he went back to the States to continue racing while working on his business, and he began to see some decent results. He finished second in the 24 hours of Daytona in the GT2 category, as well as coming second in the 12 hours of Sebring. But in 1998, he started to realize he had more promise focusing on the sponsorship side of things rather than racing. And after two further years of racing, in 2001, he decided to give up on motorsport completely to focus on his newly renamed company, Just Marketing International, or JMI. And well, once he put more time into JMI, it really began to take off. By 2005, he was doing deals with Formula One teams with the first one being McLaren negotiating their Hilton and Johnny Walker sponsorships, with the Hilton sponsorships still remaining on the car today. He would then go on to make huge deals with Williams, Red Bull and Ferrari, with the most lucrative being getting UPS on the Ferrari, and most famously, organising the iconic Williams-Martini partnership. Understandably, through his success, he was able to get back into racing as a hobby, and over 2006 and 2007, he competed in the Ferrari Challenge Series, actually winning a race at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal as a support race to the Grand Prix. Well, soon after in 2009, he started his own racing team with his old friend from Jim Russell Racing School, Richard Dean. 
It was called United Autosports. Now, he actually started it for a bit of fun, so that he could go to a few races away from the fast-paced life of Formula 1. Now, seeing as he co-founded it, he owns 50%, however, it's Dean who really manages the day-to-day -day operations of the team. Zach also got involved in a bit of racing for the team as well, most notably competing in a full season of the British GT Championship in 2013. However, 2013 was also another landmark year for Zach. His company, JMI, was bought up by British firm Chime Sports Marketing for $76 million. And well, by 2013, Zach still held a 20% stake in the company, so earned $15.2 million from the deal, or $19.5 million in today's money. However, CSR also wanted him to remain as CEO, but only three years later, a certain Formula 1 team came knocking. Well, it was McLaren, and they wanted Zach to come in as the new executive director of the McLaren Technology Group. He actually came in to replace the great Ron Dennis, who had been at the team for 36 years since he joined in 1980. Now, Zach came into the team when it was a political nightmare, which had really affected McLaren's on-track performance. So, it was a real step into the unknown for Zach. And so, over the next few years, he completely began to restructure the management of the team, mainly by getting rid of racing director Eric Boulier and bringing in Andreas Seidel as team principal and James Key as technical director. In 2018, Zach was further promoted to CEO of McLaren Racing, which is the role he still remains in today. And now, since Zach joined the team, they've seen some brilliant growth up until the 2022 season. In 2017, they finished 9th on 30 points, then 6th on 62 points, 4th on 105 points, 3rd on 202 points, 4th on 275 points, and finally 5th on 159 points which was understandably a very disappointing season for McLaren. However, McLaren have a truly long-term plan, so they don't see this performance in 2022 as much of a problem. Now, while McLaren have seen an average year-on-year -year growth in points of 178%, they've also seen considerable growth in sponsors since Zach came in. For those that watched the sport in 2017 and 2018, you will remember McLaren with their 2018 car with virtually zero sponsors on it really reflecting the struggling nature of the team. However, fast forward to 2022 and they've got so many sponsors that they are using technology to change which sponsors are on the car using illuminated hubs, which is the first time we've seen anything like this. Now, Zach has very high hopes for McLaren in the future. Firstly, of course, he wants to take them back to the front of the grid in Formula 1, but he also wants McLaren to win in other motorsport categories. This is shown by their IndyCar, Formula E, Extreme E teams, and possibly a new WEC team as well. Zach said in a recent interview that he wants to be the first boss to win the Triple Crown of Motorsport, which is winning the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the Monaco Grand Prix, and the Indy 500, which at the moment looks like quite the challenge. But one thing I've learned is to never write off Zach Brown. Right, well that's his life story from start to finish, so let's dive into the numbers. Zach has said in a recent interview that through both his sponsorship work with JMI and his work with McLaren that he has generated over $2 billion for Formula 1, so it's pretty easy to believe his net worth of over $100 million. However, it's not so easy to understand how his wealth is broken down. The majority would have come from his time from JMI, firstly from when it was acquired, but also considerably large salaries throughout this time. And then of course, while he doesn't hold any shareholding in McLaren Racing, he would be earning quite a lot through his salary. Now, McLaren haven't publicly disclosed his salary, however, we can expect it to be in the region of around $5 million. As well as this, he does hold 50% of United Auto Sports, however, the team is primarily owned by shareholders, and with a shareholder value being just over $2.5 million, we can assume he doesn't hold much wealth in this team. However, as mentioned previously, he does have a $15 million car collection, consisting of around 50 cars, with a third of them being iconic race cars. Now, Zach has a couple rules when collecting these race cars. Firstly, every car has to have won a race and be driven by a world champion. So you can imagine his collection is very special. It includes the 1991 McLaren driven by Ayrton Senna, the 2001 McLaren driven by Mika Hakkinen, the 1987 Williams, driven by Nigel Mansell, the 1978 Lotus 79, driven by Mario Andretti, 
the 1997 Ferrari driven by Michael Schumacher, the 1980 Williams driven and won in the championship by Alan Jones, the 1997 Walter Wolf driven by Jody Schechter, as well as countless other iconic race cars from a variety of motorsports. So I think it's fair to say Zach has one of the greatest Formula 1 car collections in the world. So that's his career in full, but what has allowed him to become so successful? What character or personality traits does he possess that has given him the tools to conquer Formula 1? Well firstly, he stresses the importance of having talented people around him. Zach himself has an advisory board of around a dozen people who are all experts in their respective fields. So when Zach is faced with a problem, he bounces this off his board and uses their expertise and experience and follows their recommendations. He understands that they are smarter than him, so it's beneficial to have faith and trust in their decisions. Secondly, Zach has always been patient and taken his time. When it comes to making a million dollar deal, he realizes the importance of allowing it to take as long as it needs to and ensures that no processes of the negotiation are rushed. This has allowed Zach to become less greedy and helped him understand when too much is too much. After all, the devil is in the details, so he ensures these details are never missed. Finally, Zach is a seriously hard worker. Now this one is pretty simple, but it's arguably the most important lesson. Zach has been working seven days a week since a very young age, waking up around 5am and working till 10pm. Now due to this, he has missed birthdays and weddings, etc. But as he says, it's a way of life for him and he absolutely loves his work. So there's another lesson in and of itself. If you want to be a seriously hard worker, then you must be passionate and love what you do because that will give you the drive to keep going. So that is how Zach Brown has amassed his enormous wealth. Now, before making this video, I didn't know a lot about Zach, but I've realized he is one of the most influential and inspiring figures in the sport right now. He's followed similar footsteps to both Toto Wolf and Christian Horner, having raced competitively himself, then turned instead to entrepreneurial ventures, which eventually landed him in Formula One management. And well, at the age of 51, I'm certain he will continue to make a huge impact on not just Formula 1, but motorsport as a whole. And so, I'm sure while he continues to conquer global motorsport, his $100 million net worth will grow quite considerably as well. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments section below if you think McLaren can really win the World Championship in some time. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe and smash that notification bell to be reminded of any new videos.